we are going to talk about the Miami Heat and the all-time lineup. So what do we mean by all-time lineup? We're picking a fi starting five, and we are picking three bench players. This can be any array of players that you want, whether it's the best guys that have ever played for the Heat or however you want to do it. And uh, so the floor is yours, Nick. Who is right. on your top? Who is your um, all-time Miami Heat team? So we're making a roster of a team that's going to go out there. My best eight players. I got five starters. They all got to be cohesive and work together. Then I got to bring off three people off my bench and my rotation. I just want to have an eight-man rotation. It's the playoff time. We need to get a win. I'm not going deep down into my bench. So these are the eight players that I'm rolling with. And these are the players that I'm going to play together. We're going to mix and match them, you know, to make a great team that could go out there and win 82 games out of 82 games. All right. This is how I'm starting off. <laughs> 82 of 82. <laughs> this is how I'm starting off, fellas, ladies and gentlemen. At my point guard position, it's a two-time champion for the Miami Heat. He went to four championships. Um, I'm going to pick him when he played for the Miami Heat in year 12 and 13. The year 12-13 season when he shot 56%, 40% from three-point line, which was amazing. I think that was the Ray Allen effect. 27 points per game, eight boards, seven assists. We're going to go at LeBron, the King James. Did you say Ray Allen effect? You mean the Ray Allen saved his ass I, in the I, finals I, effect? I, uh, hold on. Wait, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. What? What's You're wrong? wrong? You heard me the whole time? Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. My yeah. Um. And at my two put your headphones. Put your headphones. At my two guard. Getting position. I'm getting echo now. At my two guard position, it will be Dwayne Wade. Oh eight, oh nine, Dwayne Wade, um, who should have been the MVP. He was robbed. Um, they gave it to LeBron that year, and it should have been Dwayne Wade. He averaged thirty points per game. I'm, I believe he was right on 50%. He actually shot the ball decent for his standard at 32%. 1.2 blocks as a guard. I mean, how can you go with anybody besides that year, Dwayne Wade? At my three, at my three, this is where I get a little different than a, probably a normal thinker because I am Coach Taylor. And Coach Taylor, when he's out there, he's the wide in his lineup. He come up with dynamic, dynamic people to play with each other. So right now at my three, I'm going with Eddie Jones, the 29 year old, the 29 year old Miami Heat, Eddie Jones, because you know he's playing with LeBron. LeBron is orchestrating my team. He's my point guard. I need shooters out there who could defend. Six six long, get in the passing lanes, shoot the ball at 38 to 40 percent from three point line. We're going with Eddie Jones. At my four, we're playing new age basketball. We're stretching it out. We're going with Glenn Rice. It's pretty simple. Lynn Rice, 94-95, shot the ball from three at 41%. Can get his own buckets when I need him to, but he's going to spot up out there. He's going to knock him down. I can count on him. Big dog, Lynn Rice. I mean, he's not big dog, but he's Lynn Rice. Y'all get what I'm saying. At my center position, we're going with um, – Sha nope, I'm lying. We're going with Alonzo Mourning. Yeah, y'all thought Shaquille O'Neal, huh? No, we're going with Alonzo Mourning because LeBron is running this, this unit. So I need a big guy who's going to be my anchor. I don't need nobody I'm throwing the ball down to who's clogging the paint. I need a big guy who could go out there and anchor my defense. And Alonzo Mourning, in the 99, 2000, he gave us four blocks per game, basically 21 points per game. He actually shot the free throw percent, shot the free throw at 71%. Shout out to Zoe. Uh, <laughs> and he goes, anchor my defense just like I need him to do. Don't really need the ball. He can still hit the little mid-range jump shot. He don't have to be in the paint the whole time. Coming off my bench, um, at least for the first, I mean, I might have to throw him in as a starter just because he might threaten to beat my ass, um, it will be Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille is coming off the bench 04, 05. He wasn't the same set, even though a lot of people say that, you know, he kind of carried us, but he really didn't. I think it was still D-Wade, even though Wade was in his second year. Shaq gave us 23 points per game, 2.3 blocks, 10, 10 rebounds, 60% from the field goal percent. And he shot the free throw at like 41%, all right, 45, but it's terrible, all the same to me. Um, Shaq is my backup because when I take out LeBron, we're running our offense through Shaq. But we're going to have Lamar Odom also come off the bench with him because we need a 6'11 guy who can run the point forward. 
He could bring the ball up. Um, he could make plays for us, get us in transition. He could slow it down. He could play off Shaq really well, pass it to him, cut. Big man, you can see everything. You can make all the passes. You can do everything that I need him to do. We're going with L.O. as our dynamic point forward off the bench. And last but not least, where we're going to go, with, I thought about this one. I just wanted to know who was going to be my third guy. Do I go with a, a heater like Rex Chapman, a guy who steps in Michael Jordan's face and talks shit to him and say, I ain't scared of you. I'm going to light your ass up and did light Michael Jordan up. So I thought about Rex Chapman because I like I can use that shooting off my bench. Give me a Vinny Johnson type microwave type feeling. And I'm like, no, I gotta go with Tim Hardaway. Cause it's Timmy, you know, Timmy with the crossover. Timmy, you know, got the jump shot. He could still shoot, he could get his points, but he's small. I'm going with Jimmy Butler, who shoots 45% for the Miami Heat this year from three. He could still shoot, he could get his own buckets. Jimmy the butt. The Buckets Butler. Big coffee, big buckets, big shooting. He's he's my third player. And then as my assistant coach will be Udonis Haslam, I need somebody who I'm giving the authorization to to come off the bench and knock a motherfucker out. I don't care. We're paying his fine. Um, we have a little extra money at Carnival Cruise Line. He can pick it up. He can do whatever he wants to go knock a motherfucker out on the court. He's going to be our henchman, but he's doing it as an assistant coach. And then as my head coach, I thought about this. Maybe Van Gundy, just to annoy the hell out of Shaq. But then we're going to fire him and we're going to bring Pat Riley in like they did before because I think Pat Riley can manage all the egos that we're going to have on our team. You know, you got to deal with Shaq. You got to deal with the diva, LeBron. You got to deal with uh, you got to deal with Wade, even though Wade is a good guy. You got to deal with Odom, who know what Odom is doing at Tootsies at night. Um you got to get them to practice the next day. So we're going to go with Pat Riley to manage all these egos. Wait, um, Rudy, your time. I, I'll listen to your Miami Heat lineup. Uh, I can't be better than mine. It just can't. <laughs> well, if, if, I mean, if Lamar Odom goes to Vegas, he might end up at the Bunny Ranch rapper, Bunny or Ranch, whatever, these. whatever you call it in Vegas, where he would, he was apparently supposedly, I don't know, had an overdose and died or, and then was revived or what have you. Yeah, because you definitely don't want the Clippers version of Lamar Odom. No. 